Welcome to Impact Makers Radio, featuring industry thought leaders sharing problem-solving insights to help grow your business and live the life you love. And here's your host, Stuart Andrew Alexander. Hi, and welcome to another Let's Talk Divorce Conversation. And on this segment of the show, I have Directory Coordinator Michael Heath of the Courtless Divorce LLC. And Michael is calling in all the way from New Jersey. Now, Michael has a wealth of knowledge in the area of divorce and will be talking to you today about how people can save money and emotional turmoil by using alternatives to divorce litigation. Now, that sounds like a really interesting topic, so let's not keep him waiting any longer. Michael, welcome to the show. Hi, Stuart. It's good to be here. Yes, so welcome, Michael. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to come and speak with our listeners. Now, let's jump straight in there, Michael. Can you briefly, in your own words, describe the people who you serve and the kinds of situations they find themselves in when they come to you for your help? Well, the people that I, uh, my my audience would really be people who are in failing marriages and and considering a divorce. And the mission of uh, my business is to uh, bring uh, bring to the public the uh, the concepts of uh, alternatives to divorce litigation. I think that uh, most people who are find themselves in a bad marriage and thinking about getting a divorce, they run out. Usually, like I did, I got divorced. Well, people run out and they hire a lawyer, and then then the spouse hires a lawyer, and then they they fight it out, and it costs a lot of money, and it's a lot of of uh, emotional turmoil that goes on and it's just very costly both uh, mentally and financially and emotionally uh so um what i do is uh i try to let people in the public know that there are other ways you don't have to go the lit- litigation way there are other ways uh, examples of course would be uh, mediation and collaborative law possibly using some sort of arbitration is another thing that can be used uh in in uh, in um in a divorce uh even hiring a divorce coach is a possibility that uh, a way that people can save money and and actually feel that they have somebody on their side helping them out so really that's what i do and in media of course in mediation collaborative law it's uh, the it's a, there's a spirit there of working things out rather than fighting things out and so uh because of using those uh, methods and short, certainly um, having, uh, I guess, a, a shift in the in the in, in the concept and uh, a shift in the paradigm, people can uh, then you know cons- at least consider mediation and collaborative law, and maybe not just go out and hire a litigator. I mean, I, when I got divorced, I just went out and hired a litigator. I, I didn't even know what, I hardly knew what mediation was. I didn't even know, I had never even heard of collaborative law. So these are the things that I'm really trying to get out to the public, kind of preach the gospel of alternatives to divorce litigation. Okay, then, Michael. So when you think about those people who walking through your door and they're looking for your help. Can you just share with us one or two examples of some of the most common misconceptions surrounding saving money and the emotional turmoil that's involved in divorce by using alternatives to divorce litigation? Well, I think a lot of people just don't know what mediation is. They kind of have this fuzzy idea what it is, or they think that, you know, mediation is something where, you know, when you, when you finally end up in court, you know, that a judge, a judge, uh, 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 forces them, uh, to do mandatory mediation, you know, that people didn't think that's, that's what it is. You know, you, you hire a litigator, you go to, you go to court and then eventually the, the law, the, uh, the judge might say, well, you have to go to mediation or you have to go to mediation to figure out your, uh, child custody and they think that's just what mediation is but you can go into mediation with uh before you even file uh, uh file for divorce you could go start you know working it out with your spouse and um that's uh that that's i think one big mis- uh, misconception and then the other thing of course is is collaborative law collaborative law is sort of like mediation it's the same concept where you're you're actually trying to work out the divorce rather than fight it out uh, it's not adversarial. It's again, there's a spirit of working it out. But at least with collaborative law, 
you have it's it's a four way meeting. You have a legal representation with you in the meetings. In mediation, you don't. It's it's the two spouses and a mediator, and that's how it's done. But some people feel that you know they want somebody that has uh, legal uh, uh, legal knowledge with them in the room and somebody there to represent them. Maybe they feel that there's a um, an imbalance of power that their spouse is very very strong willed and and they're, they're intimidated by the other person, so they want somebody who's going to be there in the room with them. So collaborative laws usually ends up being more expensive than mediation. But it's also usually, usually ends up being a lot less expensive than litigation. So I think those are some of the misconceptions that people are just not aware of these of these these um, uh, avenues that they can go in order to end their marriage. Based on what you just shared with us, and of course, nothing what you're sharing with us today is legal advice. But unless you have permission to share names, dates, and places, please keep client confidentiality in mind and share a case study or a short story of how you've helped someone who came to you with those challenges you just described and what kind of transformational results you were able to gain for them please well there was one time there was a couple that that uh, they um they were they were uh uh, actually, I even wrote a blog about, about uh, this sort of scenario. I think I called it the Starter Marriage Blues. It, it, it was a young couple. They, you know, they went and they fell in love, and they were in their early twenties, and they got married, and they just kind of rushed into everything, and it just wasn't working out. They weren't really weren't. Uh, they really weren't uh, uh, made for each other for whatever reason, or maybe they just felt that they kind of rushed into it afterwards. They realized had maybe some buyer's remorse or whatever. So anyway, they were, you know, they were going to go out and hire lawyers and you know you know i i you know again like you just said i'm not a lawyer so i never dispense legal advice but i did say well, at least learn about this other learn about what mediation is and because they didn't really have much in assets they didn't they hadn't been married very long there were no kids involved that they were in some ways a very i mean all anybody can really use mediation but this was a, a perfect example where hiring two high priced uh, uh, lawyers was really not really you know it did not really fit them so uh, they had a couple of issues they did need to to settle there was a there was a there was a uh, a van that they owned together and uh uh there was a it was uh, it, the the van had been given by by the grandmother of the husband but the but the wife always used it so there were some some issues there so what they did was they went to uh, a mediator and then they worked they worked it out and uh, you know they uh the mediator made these suggestions on really you know what they what the what the mediator does is really not doesn't really look so much at the positions every everybody has their own position well I, I should get the van and the other one says oh no i should get the van well the uh the mediator says well why do you need the van and why do you think you should you should get it so they kind of worked it out where the husband um or the, the the husband actually in a sense sold it to the to the future ex-wife for for a good deal so she was happy she got the van because she needed it for her business he was happy. He he got some money and was able to make a deposit on a on a car for himself. So they they worked it out, and it ended up being much much less less expensive than if they hired lawyers and tried to go to court on everything and and everything. So that was just a perfect example where it was a, where what they call win win. She won because she got the van at a good price. He won because he got some money, and he was happy. She was happy, and maybe they didn't get a hundred percent of what they want, but they got, a, a, you know, they got a, a, a good deal, and, and it all and it all panned out. So that would be a, a, an easy uh, easy situation where it all, you know, it worked out for both parties. For those people who are looking to save money and the emotional turmoil involved in divorce litigation, can you just share one or two of the most common unknown pitfalls that they might not be aware of, but definitely should be aware of? Yeah, I mean, mediation should really end up costing you less money because of just the way it is. You only have one person, and mediators usually charge less per hour than a lawyer does. And also, if you if when you when you do have to bring a professional in, like say like a professional on child custody or a professional on finance, 
uh, like in, in, in litigation, each side gets their own professionals. So that, it's expensive. You're, you're, it, everything is, is, is but in twos. It's the duplication. But in mediation, because you're working together, you're getting a person to come in and help you. So, so rather than paying two professionals, you're only paying one professional. So for all those reasons, it usually ends up being less expensive. But there is a, I'll, I'll, you, it's a very, very good question. Is there a pitfall? Yeah, there is a pitfall in the sense that let's say you go into mediation and for whatever reason, you guys just don't, the, the, the couple just doesn't work together and, and just makes it impossible, then you'd have to go to litigation. And so at that situation, you would have spent money to uh, a mediator and you would then have to go to litigation and literally have to start at square one because, you know, if it fails, it fails. So there, there is a little bit of a risk there. There is that. Um, with collaborative lawyers, there's a risk there too. Now, when the, when you go to collaborative, if you do collaborative law, the law one of the things that's unique about the situation is that the collaborative lawyers sign a disclaimer. They, they call it. It's a, it might be a disclaimer. It, it's a form that basically says that if this doesn't pan out, we will not be representing you as litigators. And the reason is is that they do that is because to give the, the collaborative lawyers an incentive to bring this to an end. They don't want, the, 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 the practice of law does not want uh, collaborative lawyers saying, oh, well, let's just give this up and let's go to litigation. They don't want that. They want, they want it to work. So the, the collaborative lawyers, there's an incentive there for them to try to bring this to an end. Now, again, the same thing with mediation. If you go to collaborative law and things just don't pan out for whatever reason, it usually does work out, but let's say it doesn't, then you would have to go and hire a litigator. And so your whole collaborative law experience, which definitely would have cost you some money, will end up being for naught. You would have spent that money and then, then you're basically starting from square one. I mean, they can take some of the information from the, from the whole uh, collaborative law situation but uh, but basically again you'd be starting so there is a little bit of a risk in the sense that if it doesn't pan out you would have spent money for no reason well ladies and gentlemen he, he looks like a hollywood film star and he certainly <laughs> sounds like a hollywood film star <laughs> but my goodness can we, can we feel his passion coming through you, you really enjoy this don't you michael I, I, I am I'm passionate about because I so much believe in it, and I really think that the that the world, you know, people there's so many people out there getting divorced, and I just think that there's it's a it's really become like an industry, you know, it's even more than a than practice. It's really a, it's a it's a multi billion dollar industry, and people are often you know ruined financially and um, and emotionally for years to come because of their divorce. So I think that they really need to really try to at least see what all their options are and, and pick the best option for them so that they really make their best choices. And so, yes, I'm glad you hear that. Uh, you can hear it in my voice because I, that is true. I'm passionate about trying to help people, uh, save as much money, uh, in their, in their situation. It's obvious that you're very passionate about what you do. What, what led you to working in this field? Uh, as far as doing the divorce thing, it, it was really more happenstance. I mean, I, I'm divorced, and uh, uh, I just happened to bump into a friend one day, and he was divorced and very angry, sort of angry by the fact that he had spent so he, so much money on his divorce, and it had taken so long, and and it was just over. And he thought that the that the uh, situation that he had litigated divorce, and he didn't that it that it that it shouldn't he shouldn't have done it. And he started telling me these things that I had never heard of. I mean, he was telling me about mediation. And collaborative law was the first time I'd ever even heard of collaborative law. So when I was just driving home, I was just, it really, it really sort of hit a, hit a nerve with me that, you know, because I had, you know, spent not nearly as much money as he had on his divorce, but he was, he was you know, financially, you know, in much better, better situation than myself, but he did spend a lot of money. He was a, he was a stockbroker and he just spent a lot of money. And so, I, yeah, I kept on thinking about it. And so what I did was I went out and I bought a book about it and another book, another book. And I just started reading about everything about the whole mediation and, and collaborative law. And more recently, I've been learning more about the divorce coaching. And so then, it, um, so then I just decided to uh, 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 write a book about it. And I started writing it. And then I thought about doing the website and, and that I would be able to really get people uh traffic to the website because people would want to 
to read about the book, read the book, and uh, and then I have uh, a directory where people or uh, mediators and collaborative lawyers and divorce coaches are actually on the website there. So if somebody is finds that the mediation or collaborative law is the way for them to go in their uh, to uh, bring their marriage to an end, that there's uh, people that they can talk to that they can either email or call or or maybe hire for for their for their situation. So. Uh, um that's uh, that's that's how it all came together yeah excellent excellent so uh, michael I, i'd just like you to it might sound a little strange but just close your eyes for a second uh-huh. uh, and picture the kind of person who wants to know how to save money and the emotional turmoil involved in divorce litigation by using alternatives to divorce litigation with that picture in mind then, Michael, what would be your best final thoughts that you'd like to share with that person listening right now? If you're bringing an end to your marriage, then you are, um, it's a very big thing. It's a very big, it's a very big thing for you. It's a life changing event. And so that you really need to have as much knowledge as possible uh, as far as so that you can make the right decisions. And so, Litigation might be the best way for you, but then there might be other ways, mediation or collaborative law. And so that you just want to be uh, um, up to date and have the knowledge um, that is necessary so that you can make the best decisions during this very critical time in your life. And so that's uh, that's what I would suggest. And uh, again, maybe going to the website and downloading my book or, or ordering the book and uh, or maybe calling somebody and, and talking to somebody and um that's uh, what i would suggest doing and uh, not just uh, and, and not, not just letting the emotions uh run your all your decision making and, and and doing things very spontaneously sit back and really find out what is the best way how can people connect with you please share your, your contact details sure um the, the website is called www.thecourtlessdivorce dot com all one word uh they can go on the website there's uh they can email me they can download the book for free they can go to the courtlessdivorce.com just click the book tab and the book tab will allow you to either purchase to purchase the uh, printed book or just download the book as a pdf and you can read it on on your um on your computer and um, that's what they can do. And uh, uh, I do respond to emails within a day. And um, again, I'm not a lawyer, and so I don't dispense legal advice. But um, uh, uh, but the people in my on my in my directory are some very fine people. They can go to them, or they can um, again read the book and uh, find out uh, what this is all about. Um, Michael, could you just expand a little bit before you go on your directory and what it actually does? Uh, well, the direct, it's the, the courtlessdivorce.com. The mission of the courtlessdivorce.com is to make people in the public aware of the alternatives to divorce litigation. That's the mission. It does have a directory of mediators, collaborative laws, and, and divorce um, coaches, plus uh, other other professionals like real estate people, when people are getting divorced, they need to get, a, they often are selling a house or maybe uh, need to need a rental. Um, there's, um, there's, a, there's people who help with uh, dating. People are going to get back and need to start to socialize again. So there's people on there on the website that uh, help with uh, dating and, uh, and, and uh, giving advice for that. So those are the different things that it has. It has um, a, a, a frequently asked questions so that you know just people can get a a quick uh, a quick idea of uh, what the uh, mediation and collaborative law is about and uh, i also have a list on there that's a pdf that they can download called my children's list and my children's list is really for parents and it gives 25 hints on things that they should do and uh when dealing with their children during the whole divorce process so um uh, it's a, something that they can download they can put next to the nightstand or next on their desk in their office and that they can maybe glance at every every other day and it just gives some very simple 
you know, things that, you know, when you're going through a divorce, you know, the, the fog of uh, uh, our emotions become fogged and we don't always act rationally. But, you know, parents should do certain things like like when you're passing your kids off to your to your ex-spouse, you know, don't don't get in an argument because your kids don't like it. Uh, don't use your kids as messengers to your other spouse. It's not, you know, it's not their divorce. It's your divorce. So these are different things that are different reminders. And it's free. I can just download this thing called the um, this uh, one page called my children's list and it's on the website it's on the home page and uh it's you know i've gotten you know many many people have downloaded and really like it so uh that's uh those are some of the things that i have great thank you so much for sharing that with us michael you've been a great guest um so thank you so much for your time today michael and thank you Stuart. you're welcome and i uh, i really enjoyed the uh, the whole interview you're so welcome michael and I just want to say a big thank you to you, the the listener, who's been joining us today on this very insightful and informative conversation with Directory Coordinator Michael Heath of the Cordless Divorce LLC in New Jersey. Make sure you check him out. You're going to be in great hands there. So again, my name is Stuart Andrew Alexander, and we'll be back shortly with some more leading divorce professionals in this, our series of Let's Talk Divorce Conversations. So until then, take care, have a great day, and we'll talk real soon. Thank you for tuning in to Impact Makers Radio. To listen to all past, present, and future industry thought leaders and trendsetters, visit us at impactmakersradio.com.